Today's video is sponsored by Hitpoint Press and the new Shift RPG system. Alright guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we are talking about the Hag Patron Warlock from MCDM Arcadia number 8. Yes. So if you're new to the channel or the series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. We're going to rate the roleplay, combat, and synergy based on how the abilities gained in the subclass improve on the base class abilities. Yes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond bundle giveaway. Because we want to give you free stuff. All that being said, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so we have a subclass. Within the subclass are subclasses. Yeah. Essentially. Pretty much. Really, it's variations, but it's just more fun to say subclass inception than that than variations. There is a green hag, a night hag, a sea hag, and then coven. Because why not? Because they wanted a fourth option. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted a redhead to stepchild of the four uh, name was, anyway. Um, I'm not going to read 47 spell names. So we will put the up on the screen. There is, there's a different list of spells, ten for each uh, of Again. the chosen variations to choose from. I wasn't gonna say it this time, but he did. Sometimes it. I just have to this, live with live with how things are. <laughs> it is a warlock, so these are options to choose from, not freebies. Sad day. So yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, you also do get a bonus cantrip of Vicious Mockery. It counts as a Warlock cantrip for you. It doesn't count against your number of cantrips. No. Which is fine, but you have Eldritch Blast, so it's probably not going to be used all that often. I mean... That being said, I mean, things do have high armor class sometimes, so you just, you're like, I'm not hitting it, so let's I, try to save yeah, instead. You, you want to mess with their stuff. Vicious Mockery messes with their stuff, too. That's, that's true. That's Secondary true. effect. That's true. Level one, where things get going. Yes. Horrifying appearance. You can use a bonus action to make your appearance monstrous with massive knobby claws for one minute. When you change your appearance, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you that you can see must make a wisdom save or become frightened of you until you no longer appear monstrous. A frightened creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. At disadvantage if you are still in line of sight and end the effect on itself on success. If the target saving throw is successful or the effect ends, the target is immune to the appearance for the next 24 hours. While your appearance is monstrous, you can use an action to make an attack against a creature within 5 feet of you with your claws, which deals 2d8 slashing damage on hit. You can use your charisma modifier for the claws attack and damage rolls. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Oh good, we can still need to do more short rest because we're a warlock. Anyway. Why not? Next up at level 6 is Auntie's Travel Guide. Mm. And your patron grants you one of her favorite abilities to expedite your escape or spy on your foes. And it's a different ability for each of the chosen variations. For green, as an action, you can magically turn invisible for 10 minutes or until you attack, cast a spell, or your concentration ends. Massive concentrating on a spell. While invisible, you leave no physical evidence of your passage. So you can be tracked only by magic. Any equipment you wear or carry is invisible with you, and you can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. For night, you learn to craft a lesser heartstone. I want to say hearthstone so bad there, but there's only one H. It's a lesser heartstone. It almost sounds like I'm putting an H in there. I'm really not. No, no emphasis on the H. Sorry. Only the first stage. <laughs> Only the first stage. Anyway, uh, it's a magical, lustrous black gem. Crafting a lesser heart stone requires four hours of uninterrupted work, which can coincide with a long rest. That's good. Otherwise, it would be useless. <laughs> While holding the stone, you can use an action to cast the etherealness spell without expending a spell slot, but the spell ends after a number of rounds equal to your proficiency bonus. After you use the lesser heart stone, stone in this way it is destroyed if you create a new lesser heart stone the previous one ceases to function you also have the c option which gives you a swimming speed of 40 feet and you can breathe underwater when you are fully submerged any creature that is also fully submerged can understand your speech if you share a language and you can understand theirs additionally you can pollute the very ground upon which you walk or waters where you swim. We know how that works with the, with the water. Uh, as an action, you release Noxus Vapors in a 15-foot radius sphere. Yes. 
<laughs> centered on yourself for 10 minutes. Any non-magical plant in the area that is not a creature withers and dies. Any creature of your choice that enters the area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there must succeed in a con save or become poisoned for one minute. A poisoned creature can repeat the save at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on a success. Once you pollute your environment in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. And then lastly, the coven option. You learn to create a lesser hag's eye by coating an eye in varnish and performing a ritual upon it. Crafting a lesser hag's eye requires one hour of un uninterrupted work, which can coincide with a short or long rest, also nice. While you're on the same plane of existence as the lesser hag's eye, you can use an action to see through it until the start of your next turn. While you see through the eye, you can see invisible creatures and objects as if they were visible, though you are blind with regard to your own senses. A lesser hag's eye has an AC of 10 and one hit point. If it is destroyed by someone other than you, you take 3d8 psychic damage. If you create a new Lesser Hag's Eye, the previous one ceases to function. That's right. Whew. So lots of options. To, and keep those in mind as well, because once you pick one of these four, it's like you pick this, you get the spells, you get the ability at these different levels. Yeah. It's not like it's not like the uh, Totem Barbarian where you, you pick, pick like you one pick of the different one. Each levels. Like, you know, yeah. When you pick your subclass as subclass, that is yes. your alleyway, your, your lane, tunnel vision down. The other ones don't exist as far as you Right. So take note. Yes, so look at all the options before you make your decision. Right. Next up at level 10 is Wicked Claws. When you take on your horrifying appearance, your claws are empowered with the fear of your enemies. Your claws deal an extra 2d8 psychic damage on hit, plus an additional 3d8 psychic damage if the target is frightened. Your horrifying appearance now lasts a number of minutes equal to your warlock level. And while your horrifying appearance is active, you can't be charmed or frightened. All right, interesting offense and defense. Cool yes. And our capstone on here, we get more variety. We get a whole other page. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Grandmother's Wrath at 14. For the green hag, you can expertly mimic animal sounds and humanoid voices you have heard. A creature that hears the sound can tell if they are imitations with a successful insight check against your spell save DC. Additionally, while mimicking a sound or voice, you can target one creature that can hear and understand you within 60 feet of you reminding them of all their failures, flaws, and insecurities. Oh, how sweet. That creature must make a wisdom saving throw against your spell. Got him. Spell save DC. I have so many insecurities. <laughs> on a success. Oh, I'm wounded. <laughs> the tar Woof. Uh, on a success, the target takes 40 10 psychic damage. On a failure, it is charmed by you for one minute. While charmed in this way, the target falls prone and is incapacitated for the duration, thinking only of its faults. A charmed target can repeat the saving throw whenever it takes damage, ending the condition on itself on a success and taking no psychic damage as a result of the effect ending. Once you attempt to charm a creature with this feature, rhyme without even trying, uh, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. You also have Knight, because that's another option. While in possession of a lesser heart stone, you hold the power of disease and death in your hands. As a bonus action, you can touch your lesser heart stone to a creature and choose one of the following two options. Cure the target of all diseases affecting it, or cast Finger of Death without expending a spell slot. Two very different options, by the way. Targeting the creature you touch with the lesser heart stone. Either kill, save it or kill it. Yes. Uh, and gaining temporary hit points equal to half the damage dealt by the spell. That's a lot. Uh, once you use the Lesser Heart Stone in this way, you can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. Whew. We still got two options left. With C, and it's, you know, C, water, C, not C. Anyway. No one can stand against your horrifying gaze. Wait. But <laughs> it's the other C. Why are we looking at stuff? <laughs> oh, well. As an action, you can target one frightened creature you can see within the other C within 30 feet of you. <laughs> I don't know why you doing this. If you target, you can see. See. This time it's this C. I gotta quit doing that, don't I? <laughs> I'm never gonna get through this otherwise. <laughs> Must make a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC. On a failed save, its hit points are reduced to See ya. Not a night night. You heard me. It's zero. Zilch. Zip. Not a goose egg. On a successful save, it takes five d10 psychic damage. Not quite as bad as quivering palm. I was going to say he's like quivering palm now has an evil cousin. 
Once you use this feature, you can't do it until you finish a long rest. Finally, we have Coven. Your lesser hag's eye is imbued with the power of your Coven. Your hag's eye can hover up to 15 feet in the air as long as it's within 120 feet of you. On your turn, you can move the floating eye up to 30 feet in any direction. If the eye is more than 120 feet from you, it falls. Additionally, you can cast a spell with a casting time of one action. You can use a bonus action to cast it from the eye as if you were in the eye's space. You can also use an action to explode your hag's eye in a 60-foot radius sphere of psychic energy that is gargantuan. <laughs> All creatures in the area must make a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC or taking 4d10 psychic damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Whew, that's a lot of options. So, take note of all those, because we're moving on into the rating portion. First up is the roleplay asterisk, as always. Talking about roleplay, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background that's on you as a player. Can't rate you, but you can rate the abilities gained in the subclass, and how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. So, looking at all that, there's a lot of options, so we're going to try to keep it concise. Is there? We're going to try to keep it concise. Um, with the role play, you do have the transform ability, you know, become monstrous. Yes. And Scary. the frighten, frighten has a lot of times good use for role play. Mm -hmm. Like, there's there's different ways you can use that in a variety of circumstances. I mean, yeah. exploration, social per primarily, but I mean, if there's creatures... You know, and maybe a combat's going to start, and then you frighten the creature, then maybe it doesn't attack. You know, there's there's ways that can be used to avoid yeah, combat. Sure. Uh, there's also some solid RP for sure when you get to your level 6 abilities. Now, again, you got a bunch of options with those, so depending on which one you take, it's going to vary the amount and um, efficiency and potency of those abilities. But each one of them has solid. I mean, you're talking about the, the Hearthstone with Etherealness and all that. With the green hag, you have your invisibility. With the sea, you have the swimming speed and the polluting the waters. We all know how that goes. And then the coven with the, the hag's eye, I mean, you have some great RP potential with all of those. Yeah. And, again, it, you're a warlock, but there are plenty of spells to pick from in there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and any of the lists have some very viable RP spells to pick from. If you right. so needed them, you know, you'll... Things like Water Walk, things like Disguise Self, things like Locate Object, Blindness yeah. Deafness. So like, there's a good variety of RP spells mixed in there to, to pick from if you needed them. And one thing that's nice too is these abilities from your different covens or you know, different types of hag that you pick uh, are giving you alternative options to using spell slots. Yes. So you have you know more lenience and ability to mm -hmm. use those in those roleplay scenarios. So that is really nice. The capstone options, again, are, are solid. Depending on which one you took, obviously, because if you pick one, you're missing out on the options for the other yeah. ones, etc. The the only thing is with the with the C one, uh, that's really combat because the, the knocking someone unconscious, that's I mean you you could use it because it drops them to zero. It doesn't it doesn't say that it kills them, um, so depending on how you do it, you know whatever. But if you if they make the save and they're taking five d ten, the combat yeah right. So <laughs> maybe some niche line there. All that being said, with all the options and potential. You're getting lots of different ways to build this character, mm -hmm. and you're going to get different unique abilities that go along with it that can all have their own unique taste on a roleplay. So we went with a 4 out of 5 for the roleplay. Um, the combat side of things stays very similar because, again, there's so much choice in there. And again, this is one of those things you could have four different people play this subclass yeah. and then function completely different because... You've got two different abilities and a different spell list that work completely independent from each other, depending on which one. Sounds like an interesting one you shot. You pick four, you know, four players, and they'll pick a different cut. The Knight of the Four Hags. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Could, could have done that with the one shot. I guess we could have. It. <laughs> anyway, freaking rabbit trails. I swear. Anyway. Um, besides the RP spell pitching before, there are again some very good combat spells. A lot leans more toward the CC kind of stuff with polymorph, dominate beast, and you know controls, compulsion, you know things like that. Yeah. There's definitely more CC type spells in here that are very potent, uh, which kind of makes sense with hags. You know they tend to lean more mm -hmm. to curses, enchantments, and things. Hags. Yeah. <laughs> Turd heads. 
Uh, but on to the more less problematic problems of warlocks. Uh, yeah, I said problematic problems. Deal with. Uh, vicious mockery cantrip is an option. I know James is like, we have Eldritch Blast. Yes, we have Eldritch Blast. But there, there could be a scenario where they sometimes ranged spell attacks aren't, aren't the best option. They're not. Sometimes they aren't. You know, especially if you've got something that's inhibiting your chance to hit for some reason. Like you've sure. got disadvantage on your right spell attack. Right. It's like yeah, hit him with the save. They hit, him, hit him with that saving throw, and it does get that extra effect. But again, more choices are never a bad thing. Your horrifying appearance gives you a way to get some slashing damage in there, uh, which doesn't sound great starting off, in, in all honesty, but you do get to lose your charisma yeah. at, you know, attack for the attack roll and damage. It gets better later on when that increases, you know, the necrotic damage adds to it for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of what you get from the level 6 ability is more RP based. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, you know, unless you were, sw- you know, the sea, you'd have swimming speed, breathe underwater, which is could be used in combat if you're yeah. having some kind of a near water right. combat situation. There, there are things there. Um, and, then, and then the other two of the other options could give you some information that would lead into a combat that kind of indirectly helps mm-hmm. combat, you know, kind of thing. But right. more RP. Uh, the Wicked Claws, obviously, I talked about with the horrifying appearance. Now you're dealing some extra psychic damage on top, mm-hmm. and it kind of pairs with itself that they yeah. have to be frightened of your appearance. It's an extra 3d8, it's a 2d8. So that becomes a viable... Yeah, 5d8, yeah. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> wow! That's I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, be, the, be the same thing as, you know, your 4d10 as far yeah. as the cap damage on your Elder's Blast if all four Elder's Blast beams were to right. hit. Kind of thing, not taking Agonizing Blast on him. Yeah. Uh, but again... It's an option, and half that damage, potentially more than half that damage, is going to be psychic damage. It's one of those two, you know, those really good, better damage types for sure. Up there, you know, you like force and, and like psychic radiant. Right right there. Yeah. Anyway, we, we, we know we, how we, 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 we've had this conversation we've been there. And finally, the capstone obviously is where you hit 14, where you get your big stick, and all mm-hmm. four of these have very cool options. Yeah. And I like the fact that they are all very different. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't really, I honestly, when I've read the first one, I read the green, I was like, oh, that's fun. Why would you not take this? Yeah, then you read the, then next, you read the next one, you're like, oh, finger of death. Oh, <laughs> I can either cure an ally of multiple th- problems if it really is inhibiting them, or I can just delete somebody. And gain temp HP. And get, and get health <laughs> back for it. Great. And then I was like, okay, there's or two good choices. And you're like, oh, wait, I get to quivering palm almost somebody? <laughs> I mean, if they fail the saving throw, it is a quivering palm. Like, they down to zero. Mm. Uh, so I was like, okay. And then I, the Coven one seems the most lackluster compared to the other four. The difference is it's not a one-off right. by the design. Versatility. It can be a one-off you need, if you want to blow it up because yeah. it tries to get to it. Right. You can blow it up. But it's there more as a continuous thing. Mm-hmm. So I like the fact that there is an option there that isn't more of a one-off thing. It's more of a, okay, now you've got two different points to cast spells from. Yep. The only problem again there is you're a warlock, so yep. you know. But besides that, it does say that you could cast your, you know, your Elder Splash from there. Sure. So that's that's a thing. But again, I do like the fact that there is an option that isn't a one off as much as the others are. Yeah, definitely. So if you want some more, you know, higher floor, lower ceiling, ceiling type builds, there's an option there for sure. With all of the options that are there, and there's a bunch of them, we did go with a four out of a possible five on the combat side. Yeah, very interesting. And again, this goes along with the synergy as well, just choices. It's just this subclass. You get four solid choices. Yeah. Each one is valid. Yeah. That, that's, the, I think, the hardest part about doing these kinds of subclasses is when you make the multiple choices, like you fall into Totem Barbarian, there's mm-hmm. a couple where you're like, eh, this is probably the best one this to take is, this one. This is an option you so, should and those, take. There's a few other um, ones that go along with that. There's different official and unofficial that have like multiple choices. Yeah. And a lot of times there's like the right choice and then there's like the fun choice or, you know, the other choices. But with this, I think they are all equally viable, which yeah. I think is very just difficult. It depends to on do. what you're after. You know, they, yeah. they, they each build a slightly different, uh, so it just depends on what you're after. But there's not a not right. a one you're like, that's the one you took, really? Right. You're not going to feel bad about taking any of them because they all mm-hmm. give you solid things that go along yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. I think the other thing, too, is the claws as they scale is yeah. is really nice and it is i mean up when you get to, to 4 or 5 d8 that's that's solid you yeah. know that's a solid attack on there that's talking about and with your 
well, right. you're doing the, the five, four or five D eight plus your charisma modifier, mm-hmm. and you know Eldritch Blast. You could roll eventually. You know your four attacks. And you could do you know four D eight plus your mod for each one if you have Agonizing Blast and stuff. But you're dealing a, a solid amount of damage. That, that is a, a good amount of damage just to be able to hit something that's coming up close to you and you just whack them. Um, and then psychic damage on top of that. Sure, uh, of course. The terrifying thing I thought about when looking through this is because you are a warlock. The mm-hmm. one good thing about that is because you get your capstone so early, mm-hmm. you could multi-class into something else. Yeah, for sure. That gave you multi-attack. Yeah. And you claw in things. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, you get you can turn into a monster. <laughs> you, you can, can turn st- into a monster. You, you can start cutting. And there's some always people. I mean, people are always like <laughs> paladin is always a, is a valid choice because it's the charisma. Yeah, um, because then you would get access to heavy armor. Yeah, and you'd be a tanky, scary, holy witch lady. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just take all of the opposites and mash them together. There you go. What's the worst thing that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the thing that's nice too is you have the scaling benefits like that has so much internal internal synergy because you have you know the, the separate spell lists, you have the mm-hmm. level six abilities, the level fourteen abilities. And just the way that, you know, even the claws and the horrifying appearance synergize with each other, the mm-hmm. level 1 and level 10, you just have so much great internal synergy with it. Um, and it, it's just solid all-around utility. I think really utility. the only thing this suffers from is that it, there is always the small problem of there is a choice with this subclass, so you're always going to give up a path because you took this path. You're not going to get access to everything that is there. Right. But you know that going into it. Right. And, of course... The bigger base problem comes from the, you are a warlock and you don't yes. get these spells for free, so that's really more the limitations I right. think from it. And other and you know what those are going in, right. and you can kind of pick your. And, and I think the hard thing too with synergy is the main things you're synergizing with. You have like your pact, you know, pact of the chain, tome, whatever. Mm-hmm. You have your spells, which are incredibly limited. Then you have uh, your invocations. Yep. Other then, than that, and, I mean that that that's your warlock. And, and a things. lot of the way this is built, it kind of feels like you're getting some more of like the more powerful eldritch invocations. Mm-hmm. The way some of these abilities are designed, yeah, yeah, they really feel like powerful eldritch invocations right. instead of like more normal ability. Just the way they're worded, the right. way they they interact, and everything, yes. they feel more like high end eldritch invocations. Yeah. So all all of that being said, with the synergy, we also gave it a four. Yeah. Just again because of that. It's, the synergy can get a little hard because a lot of the synergy that's in this subclass is internal. Yeah. There's not really a whole lot adding on to the base warlock because, again, you're not touching invocations at all. You're not touching... I and mean, you're getting spell options depending on which one you pick. Yeah. But that's normal for any su- subclass. Yeah. You know, so but like, so, like James and mentioned earlier, I think really. this gives... Because of the effects it does give you, you know what you're getting in here. So some yeah. of the other Eldritch Invocations that may give you similar type effects here would allow you to branch into other options there. Right. And I think another thing, too, is with this, like, for example, your uh, Horrifying Appearance is reliant, again, on a short rest. So it's some of those things it's that, like, when you get abilities, yeah, yeah, it's like you're, you're becoming even more dependent on short rest, and some of these other um, abilities are long rest. So yeah. it's like they're... Awesome and cool and strong, but they have that kind of longer recharge or limited use. This is true. So that's really the only thing for us, I think, that that held it back from a higher score. Yeah. Still very solid. Still very interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting for sure. Definitely. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Check out our sponsors in the link down below. And as always, thanks Thanks for for watching. watching. Shift is a brand new RPG system in development that lets you play in any world you can imagine and allows players and GMs to create their own custom rules with ease. Every aspect of Shift is powered by traits with an associated Shift die. As characters use their traits to interact with the world around them, the traits die will change, shifting to better or worse dice as the narrative unfolds. Every die roll in Shift risks your dice shifting, which keeps the action exciting and dynamic. Check it out today at hitpointpress.com shift.